So Pete said, where's the mind? Is it, is it, is the mind caused by a previous moment of mind, which I think is more the Buddhist perspective, or is the mind generated by the brain or, or is it something else? Um, which of you would like to start that question? <laughs> Where is the mind? Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, so mind is, 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 is not physical. It's not matter. Also, in certain types of research in the near-death experience, for example, they call it non-local consciousness, which is a very nice term. And that completely is agreeable with, with, with the Buddhist perspective because consciousness is not local, it's not matter. The definition of mind is clear and knowing which means that it's a kind of entity that has the capacity that things can appear to it and it can know those appearances, right? It can have a perception. So that is consciousness. But as we human beings, we have a physical brain and consciousness depends on the brain, right? So there's a correlation, especially when you talk about sensory perception, it's very clear the correlation between certain aspects or locations within the brain and sensory perception that's very well researched right but when it comes to mental consciousness as we know in buddhism we talk about six types of consciousness five sensory perceptions and one mental consciousness so this mental consciousness to a certain extent uh, depends on the brain it depends on the training of the individual so to take for example uh, obsessive compulsive disorder disease an example as base for explanation then Jeffrey Schwartz uh, did a very interesting research. That means that an untrained mind, the, the patient, so to say, is forced to act in a particular way because the neurotransmitters tell this person what to do. So that means that his first brain activity and that is generated in consciousness in intention and activity, right? Then if you train your mind with what he calls uh, mental attention or the power of mental force, as we in Buddhism, we define those aspects as the mental factors, alertness and mindfulness or introspection and mindfulness, right? So if you train your mind in those two mental factors, as we just discussed, you become more aware of, of what's going on inside your mind and you'll be capable of not following certain thought patterns, right? So if you train well in those stages, then there's first consciousness and then brain activity because we talked about this neuroplasticity that the mind training actually rewires the brain or changes the brain. So in that kind of mind training, you rewire the brain. If you rewire the brain, then the brain cannot tell you again to do these things as, as, as the mind or the brain was planning to tell you before because you have rewired the whole, whole issue. Yeah? To take an example, uh, a very interesting kind of aspect here is, is uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the famous actors when he plays the movie the aviator, yeah, aviator. Yeah. 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 yeah, So in that movie, it's very interesting. He did an OCD problem before shooting the film. He had to act as an OCD patient over a few months. Because of his habituation pattern, his mental intention, he rewired the brain in a way to get OCD, right? Mm -hmm. So you see there's first consciousness, then brain activity. Then after the shooting, he was automatically he had a severe OCD problem. So the brain was rewired, so he acted in the way that the brain tells him to act. So then that means first he had during the shooting consciousness. Oh, now I have to do this, now I have to do this. He rewired the brain, got OCD problem. Then in the period the brain told him what to do, he was not in control. Then he went to Jeffrey Swartz, who helped him to, to train the mind and rewire the brain again. So you see this first was consciousness with cause a kind of brain activity. Then brain activity causes a particular consciousness to come about. And then later again, it was reversed. So that means that there's a correlation between mind and the physical brain. And that's, that's, that's pretty clear in different types of research, right? Yeah, but when you talk about more subtle forms of consciousness, especially in the near death experience, or as we call it, the clear light mind meditations of, of Tukdam, then there's less dependence or even no dependence on the physical brain, but still there is a consciousness that has perception. And even there's a lot of evidence that suggests that the perception is valid at that time. 